Okay, so here's the thing. It is so big, it's biblical. Yes, it is biblical and um, most of us have got a Bible sitting somewhere on our shelf gathering dust and actually many of us don't have a Bible. Um, it is actually the most um, popular book in the world and it has been for a number of centuries. Um, but many of us are, you know, busy reading all other kinds of things um, because the world's a very interesting place now that we've got the internet. But um, the things, the events that are occurring, as we can see, they literally are biblical and they're biblical scale and the message is biblical. And many of the stories in the Bible, as Paul was, tells us, are actually templates for us upon in whom the ends of the world have come. And so many of the stories of the people in the Bible, they're literally playing out right in front of us. So I would like to highlight this um, call to go to the mountains, Jesus said is the same as that of Lot. And he tells us that in Luke chapter 17, he says, when the bridegroom comes or when the son of man is revealed, it will be exactly like it was in the days of Lot. So who was Lot? All right. So Lot lived in a, in a city called Sodom. I think I might have mentioned it before. It was a very, very wicked city. They were not hospitable to visitors who came. They would tie them up in the middle of the, of the city and they would um, starve them to death and they would mock them while they were doing that. So they were very, very cruel, incredibly cruel. And they were also into all kinds of sexual um, um, variations, can you say, and um, it was very abusive, incredibly abusive, and Sodom um, was so wicked that it um, risked being destroyed, and God sent Jesus down um, to personally go and inspect the city to see if it was as bad as what he'd heard. He went um, to Abraham first and Abraham said, but hey, you can't destroy the city if there's some good people in it. And, and Jesus had this little conversation with Abraham and, and Abraham said, but you know, if there's 10 people, will you not destroy it? And Jesus said, if there's 10 people, good people there, I will, you know, it will not be destroyed. But you know what, there weren't 10 good people in Sodom and there were five other cities as well. And um, two angels were sent to Sodom to rescue him and to call him out. And when the angels came to Lot, to his home, uh, all the men of the city gathered and they wanted to have sex with the angels. And um, they were at the door threatening Lot, demanding that he bring them out. And anyway, the angel said, look, you know, we're here to rescue you. The city's going to be destroyed. You've got to get up and you've got to run out of the city and go to the mountains. So Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, it's going to be exactly the same. Now, what's fascinating is that it was in 2015 that the new marriage laws were brought in all over the world, pretty much all over the Western world anywhere. Anyway, where they brought in um, the LGBTQ um, agenda, basically, and... Um, this was the point at which we had the sign to go to the mountains. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so it will be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. And so what I want to share is the story of another man, which I have alluded to before, um, that began in 2019. So when the call for the ecological conversion went out by the Pope, which is a call basically back to the pagan religion of the worship of creation instead of of the creator at that very same time god raised up jonas all over the world and we have this testimony from charisma magazine who actually reported that there were thousands of people reporting all over the world that they were being called with the jonah message to go to a city now i actually received a jonah call at that very time myself I did not know anybody else had received the call. We all were starting to question my sanity, as was I. Um, but when I learned that this was happening to everybody, um, you know, I realized that it was for real. So God, uh, when I asked God, where is Nineveh for me? What city am I, am I being sent to? Um, 
God spoke to me and said, uh, what city were you born in? And of course I answered Sydney, which is where I was born. And God proved it to me, you know, like I do have quite a story about all of this, which will come out at some point. I will share my story. But anyway, so God sent me to Sydney with Jonah's message. Now I had to interpret that. Um, it was very clear that destruction had been decreed and that's really what the ecological conversion um, was all about. It was depopulation and so destruction was coming so I began to warn people that Sydney was going to be destroyed and to turn to God for protection, <clears throat> which is what the Jonah message is. So I'm going to read, um, have a read of the book of Jonah. I don't have time to read it but I am going to read the passage that I was called with just to put in context. So I'm going to read it just so I stay on track here. So as we know nuclear war is arriving in 2022. This message began to be given in 2019 which was three years ago. You'll understand why that's significant in a minute. So I'm following the council here and I'm making a proclamation and a call to all the cities, to Sydney in particular for protection to repent by fasting in sackcloth and ashes. So I'm going to read the story here and then I'm going to do it so you can see it. So we know that the city is, cities are under attack. Um, the destruction of civilization has been decreed in 2019 as part of the ecological conversion. And some of these attacks will include nuclear, tsunamis, um, fire, flood, poison in the waters, um, chemtrail viruses or viruses being released by planes and chemtrails. So the message in Jonah 3 is this, arise Jonah and go to Nineveh. Okay so the word Jonah actually is the word for dove in Hebrew and as I said I want to know where Nineveh was for me and God said it was Sydney. So this is what it says, preach to them the message that I give you. So I asked God what message do you want me to give and God told me the abomination of desolation, this template here and then he gave me Habakkuk 2 which says write the vision and make it plain on brochures so he may run who reads it. So I'm holding up here one of my brochures on which I've written this exact message. Write the vision on brochures so that he may run who reads it. That's what I've been doing for the last three years. And um, it says preach to them so tell them this message. They're in a bad way and I can't ignore it any longer. I'm reading from the message um, version here. So this time Jonah started off straight for Nineveh. So Jonah's got a real problem, he's a disobedient um, prophet and he runs the other way. Nobody wants to go to Nineveh by the way. They are, this is the city and the home of the ancient terrorists and anybody they don't like they skin them alive, they hang them up by claw hooks, they do all kinds of horrible things to them. So Jonah beat a rapid reverse <laughs> down to Joppa, jumped on a boat and headed off in the other direction. But he gets thrown overboard um, because he's been found to be the cause of a big storm. He gets swallowed by a whale and three days later he gets vomited out onto the, uh, onto the beach after he personally has repented for doing the opposite to what God's asked. So Jonah himself has had to repent. And that is the reason why he turns around and he goes, goes back to Nineveh. So Jonah um, has had a pretty mean, um, mean experience which you read in Jonah chapter 2. And he tells his story of how he repented. Now then it says, Jonah this time starts off straight for Nineveh obeying God's orders to the letter. Nineveh was a big city, a very big city. It took three days to walk across it. Jonah entered the city and he went one day's walk and he preached. Now what exactly did Jonah preach? In our Masoretic text we have that he preached in 40 days Nineveh will be destroyed. However, if we go back to the oldest text we have available, which is the Septuagint, it actually says in three days. Now why would three days be of significance? I pointed out before that the Jonah message came in 2019 and we're in 22 and there's nuclear war being threatened right now. So um, 
in Ezra chapter 4 verse 6 it says that I have given you a day for a year so in other words three days is three years so to me that makes a lot more sense and um, so he said in three days Nineveh will be destroyed actually this the word that he used for destroyed is the same word for what overcame Sodom and Gomorrah Hathak is the word 